Hi, this is Tim Fieser with Freaky50Fitness.com, a website dedicated to preserving your wealth by rediscovering your health and its benefit to our nation's future. Today I'd like to talk about the glycemic index and its importance for you to learn it so you can improve how you eat and when you eat. What the glycemic index is, is it ranks the various carbohydrate foods that we eat. And today I'd like to focus on the fruits. I think fruits are very important that you should incorporate many of them into your diet. They're high in antioxidants and high in fiber. And they also provide the natural sugars and fructose that you want when you're on a good workout program. So I highly recommend eating as many fruits as you can. So what the glycemic index does is it measures the impact that carbohydrates have on your relative blood sugar levels. The higher the GI rank of a food, the higher the spike in your blood sugar once you've consumed it. The lower the GI rank of a food, the lower your blood sugar or it remains more stable upon consumption of your lower GI food. So let's just take a look at the fruits, the very common fruits that many of us eat throughout our lifetimes. Cherries are at the low end of the glycemic index with a rank of about 22 and so your low range fruits kind of range in the mid 20s to the low 30s. The mid range fruits, apples here on up through your oranges, are in that 40ish range, kind of consider that middle of the road GI rank. And then finally, we get to the high end fruits or the high GI rank fruits, bananas, your cantaloupes, up to watermelon with a rank of 72. So why is this important to learn the glycemic index? Well, the more frequent you have high spikes in your blood sugar over time, the more you tend to store fat and gain weight. So it's important throughout the day that you try to eat foods that help stabilize your blood sugar levels. One of the mistakes that I made early on Maybe not so much a mistake, but it was a mistake that I didn't transition appropriately when I was meeting my fitness goals. Through my late 30s, I tried to rebuild myself up, increase my muscle mass. So it was great that I started to eat a lot of oatmeal, and I actually put a banana in that oatmeal every morning. Well, I created a high carbohydrate based breakfast and supplemented that with a protein drink, of course, and that really met my needs when I was trying to gain muscle mass. But then when my goal changed in my early 40s to get, try to get more lean and cut, I struggled a little bit early on because I wasn't recognizing that I really had a high carbohydrate breakfast when in fact I tore my workouts down and was more interested in a little bit more uh, fat burning workouts and so forth. Yet I was going with a high GI fruit and with my oatmeal. <clears throat> Once I learned about the glycemic index, I was able to make that change in my diet, that adjustment that I made. And that's where I went more to strawberries and the berries in my oatmeal which are lower rated GI fruits, really helped me meet my goals in my early 40s and now through my mid 40s on up to 50, I've been able to maintain a great um, muscle to body fat composition under 10%. So when you can understand what you're eating and, and recognize when to eat throughout the day, you will be more successful in your fitness goals as well as improve your overall wellness through a, a more uh, nutritious diet. <clears throat> One of the things I just want to point out about the GI rank is what's more important to track is something actually called your glycemic load, which actually takes into account the serving of carbohydrates that you're eating. So each of these fruits, um, we've tried to measure out servings, of course, you know, grapefruit's a grapefruit, peach a peach, but you know, a cup of strawberries, a cup of blackberries, you use one cup as kind of a standard measurement. Of course, I love apples, one medium apple is kind of a standard there, it's about a cup. But what the glycemic load does, and this is the actuary in me, how he's liking formulas, is you take the carbohydrates in a serving of food times its GI rank, and you divide it by 100, and you get your GL, or your glycemic load. That's the real important number that you want to keep to as low a level as possible to minimize the spike in your blood sugar. So for example, to apply that to practice, if we look at an apple, one medium apple, I eat one apple a day, the GL load for a medium apple is, we want to know our carbohydrates, for an apple is about 25, its GI rank is 38, so the actual GL of an apple, like that formula, is 9.5, calculated as your carbohydrates times your GI rank divided by 100. So it's good to learn, I mean, you didn't realize that uh, actually being an actuary gives me an advantage to being healthy, no, I'm just kidding. Recognizing the proper nutrition, we always focus on the amount of calories and fats and carbohydrates in our foods, but linking the GI index and the GL to your foods will make you more successful in managing your diet and how you eat to achieve your fitness goals and more importantly your weight loss goals. So I leave you with a very important um, ending 
and that is learn your GI of your fruits. I know most people love fruit. It's a great transition tool when you want to make that change to lose weight. And remember this film and watch it often because we've laid out from lowest to highest how your fruits rank on the GI scale. This is Tim Beezer with Freaky50Fitness.com, encouraging you to take action to get healthy, to stay healthy.